Hello to all the participants. My name is Nina Henning and I'm from GalfMed. I am leading a project called the Ag Results Foot and Mouth Disease Vaccine Challenge Project. And I'm delighted to be here for week four of the EU FMD and OIE course on applying public-private partnerships to the control of FMD and similar trans transboundary diseases. Um, I am here, as you know, um, to be a part of the discussion for week four, which focuses on developing an enabling environment for PPPs. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the role that our project is playing in the Eastern African region around um, being a catalyst or a facilitator for the development of PPPs for the FMD vaccine value chain. And um, I'll start out by giving a brief overview of Ag Results, which um, is the donor for this project. So Ag Results is a $152 million um, collaboration between five major donors, um, the Gates Foundation, the governments of the UK, the US, Canada, and Australia. Uh, these five donors have collaborated to invest in agricultural and livestock innovation projects um, that all have something they call a pay for results mechanism built in, which is designed to incentivize private sector entities to come into markets that they would not likely have otherwise come into. Um, so the FMD Vaccine Challenge Project is one of the portfolio of projects that Ag Results is investing in. It's an eight year, $15.8 million project. We've just launched it earlier this year. Um, and it is um, basically focused on supporting the development and uptake of high quality FMD vaccines tailored to meet the needs of Eastern Africa. Um, focused on six countries, Burundi, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. Uh, the project hopes to uh, increase vaccine production and regional purchases of FMD vaccine um, in order to create greater market stability for um, FMD vaccines and ultimately to reduce the price of the vaccines. Um, the project is also interested in creating a private sector model for buying and distributing FMD vaccines to complement what historically has been largely a public sector effort around FMD control in the region. So right now we are in the development phase of the project uh, whereby we are talking to a number of uh, pharmaceutical companies around the world to encourage them to engage with us this project um, to develop, register, and commercialize uh, high quality FMD vaccines for the region. Within the context of the project, uh, we are planning to develop a PPP framework, which ties into objective three from the previous slide around um, encouraging private sector participation in FMD control in Eastern Africa, uh, which we think will ultimately create efficiencies in the vaccine value chain and results in improved accessibility to farmers and greater market stability. Um, we are working um, with the OIPP, OIE PPP handbook as the foundation for our framework. It will be customized to specifically look at um, the FMD vaccine value chain and specifically look at the countries in Eastern Africa that our project is focused on. And we see it as um, the, the framework as something of a practical guide that uh, we expect will be further developed um, in partnerships between public sector and private sector to create MOUs, contracts, or less formal agreements between these entities. And um, 
we expect that it will, as I mentioned, focus on, in our case, the FMD vaccine value chain um, and the unique situations of FMD control in Eastern Africa. But we also see it as being um, more broadly applicable to other geographies and to other livestock vaccine value chains. Um, but yeah, we wanted to, to share it as an example of um, a way that the OIE PPP handbook can be practically applied uh, to a specific value chain and to a specific geography and hope that it inspires um, uh, thoughts and discussions around how these applications can also be applied um, in other places um, and in other value chains. So I wanted to share a little bit about the challenges and opportunities that we see specifically um, around developing um, uh, public-private partnerships in Eastern Africa for the FMD vaccine value chain. Um, so there are six um, main challenges that we see in the region around um, uh, mostly inefficiencies in the FMD vaccine value chain and how we think that the public-private partnership model could help address these inefficiencies. Um, the first one I wanted to talk about was the fact that there's currently no available vaccine um, being sold in the region that addresses all of the regional risks. So we see an opportunity to develop and produce high quality vaccines um, that are really matched uh, to the strains that currently are circulating in the region for foot and mouth disease. And in terms of a PPP arrangements, um, one opportunity that we see could be um, an arrangement between a local government vaccine manufacturer and an international vaccine manufacturer um, to partner together uh, to create a, a, a new vaccine for, for the region. Now, this is not the only way that new vaccines can come into the region in the context of, of our Ag Results project. Um, it's not necessary for a local producer and local manufacturer to be involved. It could be um, a direct um, supply from an international vaccine manufacturer to both public and private sector um, customers in the region. Um, the second challenge I wanted to highlight was uh, challenges with serotyping and vaccine matching. So due to limited facilities, budgets, and infrastructural mechanisms, um, it's, it's a challenge in the region to carry out effective serotyping and vaccine matching. Um, and, and this contributes to you know, to the issue that I talked about in, in number one um, of uh, the lack of a vaccine that addresses all the regional risks. So again, one area that we see as a potential PPP in, to help with the second challenge highlighted here is um, a partnership between government and local dairy or meat associations um, to help with the capacity building and the equipment upgrades. So um, we've seen examples where local dairy or meat associations um, are willing to invest in um, if, if facilities and infrastructure to help with serotyping and vaccine matching. And this is an area that we, we want to look into um, within the context of the work that we'll be doing in Eastern Africa. Challenge number three is long vaccine lead times, uh, vaccine supply lead times. So um, the issue is that uh, the vaccine production process can take two to three months typically, uh, plus delivery. And the problem we're seeing in Eastern Africa is that um, the sourcing of FMD vaccines are typically re reactive as opposed to proactive and preventative. Um, so when there's an outbreak, um, governments look to source the vaccine, uh, but by the time they actually have the vaccine they need, um, it's been several months since the outbreak started. So 
um, a PPP arrangement that could help with this inefficiency is um, between governments and an FMD vaccine manufacturer for supply and also for supporting the process of demand forecasting. Um, this is really tied to also creating a shift from um, the, the buyers of FMD vaccines uh, being in a, in a reactive uh, place to, to really taking the approach of um, preventing FMD and, um, and proactively you know, placing orders in, in that context. The fourth challenge is um, limited efficacious vaccine supply chains. So this is related to the fact that vaccines need, FMD vaccines need a cold chain distribution process to maintain efficacy. Um, and without it, um, there are you know, questions that will be raised around whether or not the, the vaccine, once it reaches the end user, or the animal, whether or not it's actually um, efficacious. So we see two potential opportunity areas here um, regarding PPPs. The first one um, could be between um, the, the government and a vaccine manufacturer or multiple manufacturers to invest in an enhanced public sector cold chain. So this would be, you know, the vaccine manufacturer um, investing money to ensure that the cold chain for their vaccine is um, is intact and um, and that is obviously beneficial because when it reaches the end user, it will um, it will be a, a high quality vaccine still. Um, the second opportunity we see is a PPP. Um, between again between the government and um, various private sector actors to outsource cold chain distribution. Um, so rather than using the public sector cold chain, this would be um, government using a private sector cold chain through distributors, vets, and veterinary paraprofessionals. Um, the fifth challenge we see are the high costs of vaccination. So this is particularly, um, as I mentioned, most of the FMD vaccination that's occurring in Eastern Africa is through the public sector. Um, these are typically carried out by government vets and there's a high cost that's incurred to facilitate travel to remote areas. So a PPP that would help with this um, cost issue would be to, uh, between the government and private veterinarians and veterinary paraprofessionals. Um, and this is an area where we've already seen um, PPPs coming into play in Eastern Africa. And lastly, um, the sixth challenge that we see is around limited post-vaccination monitoring. So without post-vaccination monitoring, um, it's really difficult to measure the effectiveness of the vaccination campaign. Um, we see this uh, a potential partnership um, that would likely be funded by the government, uh, between the government and veterinary paraprofessionals um, under the supervision of vets to ensure proper coordination, data analysis, and, and plan of action. So it would be the VPPs who could actually get out into the field and do this post-vaccination monitoring. Um, this is the last slide of my presentation, and I just wanted to share a little bit about um, the plan that we have to both develop this PPP framework and, and then to implement it. As I mentioned, we've just launched this project um, earlier this year, so we're in the very early stages. Um, we haven't yet developed our PPP framework, um, but that will be done within the course of this, this coming year. Um, and so that's the, the first objective that we have around this initiative is, is to develop the PPP framework, um, as I mentioned, customized to the FMD vaccine value chain. 
um, the first step of that is really to engage key public and private sector stakeholders to understand from them what they see as key challenges and concerns um, that should be addressed um, through a PPP model in their own countries. And um, we're really looking at uh, the participants of this course who are coming from uh, Eastern Africa uh, to be these, at least in part, some of these key stakeholders, both from the public and the private sector side. So uh, my colleague, Badi Malidi, who is participating in this course, um, is our, um, our buyer relations lead, and he's the one who's really taking the lead on engaging stakeholders in Eastern Africa. Um, and he will be following up with, with many of you um, during, after the course, and you've, a lot of you probably had some contact with him before the course, um, to help, help better understand um, a, a little bit more around the opportunities and challenges um, in the FMD um, control space, specifically around uh, FMD vaccines and, and how you feel that um, public-private partnerships could potentially help alleviate some of these challenges. Um, with all of these inputs um, received, Body and, and our team will be drafting the PPP framework. Um, and then validating the framework with uh, the key stakeholders. As I said, this will be done within the course of this next year. And, and then we'll be looking at, you know, what are the best ways to implement the, the framework um, and looking at all elements of the vaccine value chain, both the, the challenges that uh, we just talked about and, and other challenges that come up um, in the conversations that we expect to have with the stakeholders over the next um, six months or so um, from manufacturing, purchasing, distribution, vaccination campaigns. Um, so as I mentioned, we as GalvMed, the AgResults FMD project, um, we expect to play a role as a catalyst or a facilitator in promoting the use of this framework to basically start the discussions um, between um, public sector actors and private sector actors in the Eastern African region um, and, and, and facilitate the development of um, the PPP MOUs, contracts, informal partnerships, agreements. Um, we don't expect to, to necessarily do this on our own. Um, we hope to collaborate with, with other organizations in, on, in the implementation stage. Um, the, the, PVS, the OIE PBS pathway um, and the PPP targeted support package um, that, that, um, that OIE is planning to, to launch in the near future is one area that um, we could particular, possibly collaborate with um, in terms of, of trying to implement the PPP framework. And we're very open to, to other um, partners and other ways of helping to essentially bring this framework to um, the, the key stakeholders, both on the public and private sector side in, in each of our target countries and, and um, facilitate um, uh, also, you know, discussions on how this framework could be applied more broadly as well. Um, so, yeah, that, that brings me to the end of the, of the presentation. Um, I hope it was informative. I hope it gave you a sense of um, how we are hoping to take the OIE PPP handbook and very practically apply it to um, a specific set of challenges in, in Eastern Africa. And I'm very happy to answer any questions that folks may have.